Welcome back to the Most Simple Podcast. This is Mo, and today I have a sweet treat for you all. Um, in the studio with me is a self-taught mixed media Nigerian immigrant artist who's based in the United States. His work delves into the complexities of toxic masculinity and highlights the challenges immigrants face. With a profound understanding of these experiences, he has predominantly employed or he predominantly employs the use of acrylic and charcoal to explore and shed light on this critical subject. Through vivid imagery and thought-provoking symbolism, he confronts the societal norms and expectations perpetuating toxic masculinity. In addition, his work aims to challenge and redefine these harmful stereotypical constructs, advocating for a more inclusive and compassionate understanding of gender roles in society. His work has been exhibited in numerous galleries and museums across the world, including the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, USA, the African American Museum here in Dallas, or very close to us here in Dallas, the Holy Art Gallery in London, United Kingdom. He's a lover and seeker of beauty in all respects, and he has interest in writing, interior design, and photography. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Mr. Mayawa Umadiki to the podcast. Hello. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. It's, it's, it feels good to be here. <laughs> Thank you. What a what a long repertoire you have and very accomplished. So congrats on everything you've done, by the way, and very, very Thank impressive. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let, let's start with the um, just the name. I mean, I'm Yoruba. I can tell your <laughs> name tells a story. You have a Yoruba first name and an Igbo right. last name. So I'm guessing your dad is Igbo and your mom is probably Yoruba. Just tell us what it was like growing up and... And what your family was like, or is currently um, like, yeah. I I grew up in um, 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 in a family of four, uh, four three siblings. Um, I'm the third of four, so I'm middle child. Um, I was the last born for a while, <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, my sister came along the way and you know grabbed all the attention. But um, uh, I um, yeah, I grew up in a pretty religious family, um, and uh, I could um, growing up, I could see um, the dynamics that most people don't talk about um, in terms of uh, most parents wouldn't say, "Oh, this is my favorite child," or oh, "That's my favorite child." You never hear any parents mm. say, but their ex- their actions were exhibited. Their actions, <laughs> yeah. Know? Give yeah, them away, so yeah. Like, um, mm. I could, I could tell from um, very early that ah, you know, these people have their favorite. <laughs> but, <laughs> and it wasn't yeah, you, it wasn't maybe. Me. It was definitely. Because <laughs> you know, the favorite I would not yeah, own up to it. It was yeah, definitely yeah. not me, you know. It was like <laughs> it was definitely not me, and I, I, I could. Um, I mean, I think that's what actually um, shaped my art the way it is now, because it's like. Mm. That yeah. dynamics actually made me made me understand what um, uh, the family setting is like, and it makes me under, it made me understand how that can also affect the emotional um, upbringing of a child, and yeah. how yeah. that can also um, affect um, the decisions that the child gets like make um, as they grow up. Um, either positive or negative, and um, how um, how that also translates into um, um, the confidence the child exhibits. You know, I was a very shy, very reserved, very quiet person growing up, um, and um, I think I'm still shy. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. But it's a part of it that comes out when, when, because I, I just, I mean, when you're coming on the show, I did a bit of just um, mm-hmm. digging up some of your work mm-hmm. on the internet. There's a way your art just kind of like shines through differently. I mean, I don't doubt that you're shy, but there's a way you're, you're kind of. I feel like your art is kind of saying some of the things that you've been wanting to express right. for so long. Would that be a fair right, session? Right, yeah, right. Yeah. It's like it's like yeah, um, yeah. my art is like an aggregate of every second I've lived. Um, it's like, mm. um, and it's not just about every second I've lived. It's about every second I've seen other persons live that um, they they really can't find the world to 
express in the sense that you know as humans we try to like label we label things you know we want to put a label a name to thing all right to something like oh if someone is smiling oh this person is happy if someone is not smiling this person is sad but they are in between gray areas the split second between the first laugh and the second laugh can tell you a lot about a person and it's that split second in between that i try to capture through my work you know um most of my work i have like this bland emotionless um look to it and is it's is left for you to interpret it as oh is this person sad is this person happy is this person you know it's but yes yeah, just those gray areas in terms of um um display of emotions the um people really don't talk about pretty much thank you so um I loved I loved your um response about the the gaps in between those feelings right and I think because of just the fast paced world we live in right now we kind of just go for those quick generalizations which are not bad sometimes like oh if someone is posting this particular kind of picture oh they seem to be happy having a fun time on vacation or you know oh they they they're sad but then what kind of complex because just before that picture was taken what are those emotions in between that wasn't right. shown or maybe the way we even see people are the way we are in that particular right. state of mind. So I like right. what you, how you described those 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 nuances. But you are leaving that interpretation right. to right. the audience. It's like it's like um it's like a dinner table, right? Um, um, that, um, if a person is like the one making all the jokes and laughing and all that, there's there are other underlying feelings uh, behind those jokes. Sometimes it's the saddest people that make the most interesting jokes, you know. So is there? I I, I kind of like most in most settings. I am um, paying attention to what people are saying. But what their what their body language is giving up? They're not saying. Yeah, you know, giving saying. up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I've I've heard that the the most depressed people you know are like the funniest right, comics right. like you know someone like Robin Williams right. and all that. Okay, so um, thanks for thanks for that, especially um, telling us how you grew up. But I'm curious to know were there any events in your childhood that kind of, I mean, apart from growing up in a family where you know um, the family dynamics which you talked about, were there certain um, influences you had growing up that kind of geared you towards being an artist? Uh, I, I feel like I feel like I feel like me being an artist was was not a choice of mine. It was art discovered me. I didn't discover art. So it, uh, this 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 is how I put it because it's like um, I mean I've always had interest in I've always had interest in um, sketching here and there. Um, although my parents didn't want me to do that, like I got, I got seriously dealt with. <laughs> we can't, we can't yeah. talk about engineering parents. Wait, wait, what was yours? Was it engineering or doctor? It was, <laughs> medicine. It was, ah. I, I'll say fortunately and unfortunately, I was also book smart. So it was my, oh, yeah. my, yeah. my teachers were like, "Yo, you should be a doctor." You know, oh my god, you're good at biology. But you have a degree in electrical yeah. engineering. <laughs> Like, was that not enough? <laughs> yeah, like I'm like I'm like so, but um, um, I, I and because it was frowned upon, like art was frowned upon in in the house, mm-hmm. I wasn't able yeah. to, yeah. I wasn't able to like do art. So um, I I think there was some incident happened um just about around the time I was living home that I hit like my all time low emotionally and um. For mm. for someone that has not really had the opportunity to express himself, you know, like I wasn't, I internalized so many things, you know, I I saw everything mm. and I said very little, you know, I because um, I mean the Nigerian society, I, I I'm always happy for those that are able to like express themselves in an extrovert and all that, you know. But um yeah, so yeah. I, I feel like art was art was um a the medium yeah, for you. it was just yeah. me letting yeah. out letting out all all the things I felt. It started off as writing poems, yeah. um, article writing, 
which I still do once in a while. But yeah, it started off as that and I felt like, oh, okay, these things I'm talking about through words can be better interpreted through pictures that I'll be able to say so mm-hmm. much. So it was it was as if talking about myself but throwing flares in the sky. So, I, I, you know, with poems, it will sound too personal, right? You can easily tell, like, yeah. oh, yeah, what was this person going through? But and you can tell more stories yeah, with pictures. Right. Let's just say that right. tells a thousand right. stories. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. With, with, the, with paintings, I'm able to deflect it in the sense that I can hide so many symbols. I can hide so many expressions. Mm. I can create different layers of mm. um, um, expressions and symbols. And you don't point directly back to me you know you'll be like mm-hmm. you'll be like oh I, I can get this i can get that from this image but i i really can't figure out what the artist is going through you know yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah that yeah. was the idea pretty much so hiding in plain sight yeah. in a way hiding in plain yeah, sight literally in a way. Uh, literally got you there got you there yeah. and i think maybe for you it, it could also be you know your introspective nature in being introverted mm-hmm. and then maybe just that whole thing with masculinity how men should be perceived mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. you know um stalwart and not moving and you know and maybe all of those two factors kind of made you bottle a lot of things inside. But it's good to hear that art really saved you. And for non Nigerians or non Africans, who might be quick to you know start throwing, you know, parents under the bus, like you guys don't understand. <laughs> for a lot of our parents, them doing what they did was, you know, uh, was a response to just making sure that we don't suffer. So but I know these days parents now know better to, you know, support and right. um, help their kids. Right. But way back then a lot of parents that they were just doing the best they could do. Right. Okay? They were surviving. Right. Nigeria was going through a lot and they didn't want their, their family, their children, you know, not being able to get good jobs in the future and provide for themselves. So again, it all came from a place of love. I just want to throw parents right. in right. 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 I, I mean I I, I, yeah. I mean I, I still appreciate I still appreciate all uh, our parents for all they do because it's like um 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 uh, if you look in every family setting it's very rare for you to say oh this uncle is an artist or that auntie is yeah, a painter yeah. and that auntie is doing fine that uncle is doing fine you know but it's very easy to look around and say oh look at that lawyer look at that oh, doctor, the doctor. Yeah, so at the yeah. end of the day it's like they they were modeling their children based off of you know like what they could see what they saw what they yeah so we're see, still a know. part of that problem and solution right. yeah, yeah 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 and i think with social media which the beauty of it to be with um a lot of artists coming up like people like you and you know other people you know honing their craft parents can begin to see models of okay you know what okay if you want to study or okay i can see how that can be you know lucrative because at the end of the day parents care for their children they just don't want them to live mm-hmm. a life of you know being derelict and relying on little little resources that your parents have they have nobody wants to have a child that depends on you for the rest of their life right so um all of that was from a place of, of, of love yeah so you, you studied electrical engineering correct no i studied soil sciences um, um oh, so science soil sciences okay uh, yeah i studied soil sciences um um and the federal university of technology so like geology in a way uh no so it's Is it geology with a no it's um it's it's more agri agri um inclined agriculture inclined ah. it's um it's um soil composition um how these different types of soil affect different types of crops and you know like the production mm. maximum production of maximizing production of like um um output um of um crops yeah, like crop you yeah, and yeah, all that. Okay. In, in yeah. okay. To, I see. I get. It. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's very specific. Was that something you wanted to do, or you know, nope. like Nigerian factor? Like... <laughs> nope. <laughs> I like, I didn't want to be that you just no, have. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, it was, it was. Um, I mean, it's majorly the Nigerian factor because um, I remember, uh... I remember, I, I got admitted to study medicine in. Um, Niger Delta University and at that time Niger Delta was like very hot um, in terms of like um, militancy and the all that instability yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I wasn't able to go for that but um, I applied to photo like a couple of times and there was one year that I I think I was like their top five um, um, post CTME result and I still didn't get admission. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like, I mean, like it was so uh, crazy. And um, 
um after that i applied again and again uh I, you know nigeria education system is about who you know my my parents were like mm, oh mm-hmm. your your yeah. results is good they should give you admission I'm like no <laughs> no <laughs> we've, done this, world, yeah. Yeah, we've done this for almost four years and i haven't gotten admission mm. yet. like so some persons have to like get involved start asking around and like ah your yeah, anatomy is full now. We don't have any space in your anatomy. But there's this department wow. somewhere <laughs> that they have <laughs> space if he wants to. Because I was tired of staying at home at this, at this point. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, you know what? Mm-hmm. Let's do that. And I mean, the, the course is really interesting. Um, it turned out to be really interesting, although not as challenging as I wanted it to be. I felt, I felt, mm, I, I felt, on the uh, bless you on the challenge um, is, if that's a word like uh, yeah yeah like you weren't quite challenged like your brain right, wasn't right being used. so it was yeah. like okay yeah. I was just coasting yeah. and um, although I dropped out of school mm-hmm. at 300 level um, uh, uh, to face art you know how did you break down your brain <laughs> <laughs> so the interesting thing was when I when I was making the decision to drop out I just finished I just I just paid my school fees for no I, I just finished oh the first goodness. semester in 300 level. Um, we just wrote the exams and I was like, uh, I don't think I want to continue with this. I, I feel like my hmm. my my life has its own direction. It's just what's yeah, yeah, and yeah. also it was like there were talks about under strike action, under strike action. So yeah. I've spent four years in. 300 level like you get what I'm saying like I spent four years Ugh. to be in 300 level so I'm like at the end of the day it's like I I don't see myself continuing like this like okay when when will I be done I'm at the end of spending seven years doing a five year course without any spillovers no 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 um failed subjects it's just the system being the system so I yeah, approached yeah, yeah, I approached yeah. one of my lecturers uh um, I remember when I told him about, um, I, I think I want to drop out. He called me to his office. He was like, okay, meet me, meet me in my office in 30 minutes. So I went to his office. He had his AC on. He sent someone to buy me food. <laughs> and after Ooh, like, was, after I ate, know, <laughs> after I ate, it was like, okay, let's talk. I'm like, he said they had to make sure I wasn't hungry. <laughs> That's how I was saying what I was saying. Yeah, let's just tell when you're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, so it was like, okay, talk to me. Talk to me. Why, why, why this decision? I'm like, I broke it down to him. And he was like, but um, you have a really nice CGPA. Um, um, uh, uh, you have a nice um, relationship with your lecturers. So I don't see any reason why you can't just wait it out, you know. I'm like, yeah, I get that, mm-hmm. okay. But um, I just feel like I've I've done this for three years. I've committed myself for three years, despite the fact that I was also doing art on the side, which my parents didn't know about. Yeah. I I was only mm-hmm. I was struggling with both arts. I was also working and I was doing school, and. Despite all this, this I would never miss a class, cause I needed to give the result oh, wow. back to my parents. Like, yo, just your parents, yeah, 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 just this is your result. This is what you want. So <laughs> I said, okay, we'll make a deal. I'll defer my admission for a year, and let me just go focus on art for a year. If it doesn't work out, I promise I'll come back to school. I'll come back. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, that sounds cool that it feels like I'll, I'll do fine regardless but let's see how it goes so yeah. I didn't tell my parents about me leaving school <laughs> I, only, yeah, yeah. I, only, oh, wow. I only went home I went home I think uh, I went back home uh, to Lagos I went back to Lagos and um, uh, I broke it I broke it uh, broke it to uh, to my people that yo i'm leaving in three days three days before i would i would leave and oh yeah and i i just they couldn't like, talk you out of it I, nah, there was no nah, way nah, yeah nah. there was no holding me back <laughs> there was no holding me back so i 
I yeah, I decided to I decided to um just come face art and do that um full time. So I, I think go um, back. If I go back. Yeah, I, I think I think after the first year after the first year I landed bit between the first year like eight months into it, I landed my first museum show, and then I landed a second museum show. So I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, he's not going back. I'm like, okay, cool. Nah, 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 What a story. Just to teach a child of this, uh, for those that might be listening, like you just have to make sure you're doing this in a very wise way. Mm-hmm. School is not for everybody. If, as someone who works with investors, I will say that. But then be dropping out of school is also not for everybody. Right. So make right. sure you're doing it in a very you know, responsible way. Mm-hmm. And then um, to also add that, you know, what you study, soil sciences, the implication of that is so great because imagine if you had a market ready to like utilize your skills the impact it might have on agriculture on ensuring mm-hmm. that farmers are getting the best out of their you know their efforts and you know and there's jobs available with you know payable pay, pay, like livable wage and all that mm-hmm. that won't be the story right. but then you also have to consider that getting a degree out of a nigerian university doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready for you know the reality of the job marketplace true that's, that's true those, the street is really really hard that's you know, true for kids. that's true but uh, I'm glad it worked out for you, but it could have easily been a different story. Right, so right. congrats to you, by the way. Right. I, I feel like yeah, if yeah, you yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna um, drop out of school, I've I've if you're gonna leave something for what, you know, and mm-hmm. and you should be you should be it should be whatever you're leaving school for should be something you can bet your 100 percent on. Like if they wake you up mm-hmm. any day, any time, you'll be able to give your 100 percent to that. If if it yep. is not that yet, I, I feel like just stay and get your degree. You know, stay and get your degree. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's all about life. Is all about creating choices um, or creating options. So if this if this isn't working out for you, and you feel like okay, you want to drop out to focus on what, you know, the the big question is what. So if you can answer that, then. Go ahead with it, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I and I also want to add that you know I imagine that being between those first eight months when you quit your um, when you put your schooling excuse me on hold and then when you got your first museum gig your family had to step up to support you one way or the other so shout out uh, to them well, and... yeah yeah technically <laughs> <laughs> when, when they just put in a roof over your head I'm sure I'm sure you didn't do it by yourself uh, how many family or friends or whatever uh, you know I'll say, say that I'll you know say, don't do this don't do this I'll say, <laughs> you say what uh, I'll say technically I'll just put it that way I'll not throw anybody into the it's box it's okay it's okay it's okay it's okay maybe so up. Let's just say some were more supportive than others, you know. Okay. But let's put them on that family and friends, your okay. loved ones. Some, okay. Somebody, somebody, somewhere. Yeah, someone, somewhere. Because you couldn't yeah. have done it by yourself. Yeah, someone, yeah, someone, yeah. Someone, <laughs> someone, yeah. Let's, let's, let's just put it that uh-huh. way. I feel like we need to bring you back and explain this other side of the story. Oh, my, oh, uh. <laughs> so wait, wait. Your, your your skills are, man, marvelous. I don't even know the English word for it. Was this all self-taught or just, you know, natural did you have to go to like a school to kind of refine your artist or artistry or this is just all self-taught it's all self-taught it's um it's it's wow. all about asking um myself questions and trying to find answers so it's um i, I never stop asking questions you know um I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm also one person that i feel like um if you show me something twice i might not need you to show me again <laughs> you know so it's um um wow. what can be so I, I think what I'm doing now started off as I started off making art as with just pencil, right? Um, yeah. Um, I was just um, doing pencil and paper. Then at some point, I I I think that was um, um 2019. I started experimenting abstract art, and it was really interesting. You know, it's faster, faster, easy way to express yourself, right? So I I did yeah. it, I I did abstract art for like six months, 
I think 20, 2020 actually um, during the lockdown. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I really appreciate. You know, it's it's a COVID yeah, was it's, it's, for it was, you, right? it's a hard time for the world, but really, I, I think I I needed that yes, moment. Yes, yes, yeah. we can talk you about know, like, like it was hard for the world, but then you also yeah, got some things out yeah, of it. Yeah, and that, you know, yeah. So I think yeah, I did I did for like six months. All I was doing was abstract painting, and I, I guess I it refined my appreciation for colors. You know, um, mm. and then I was like, okay, uh, I miss charcoal. I like colors. Okay, how can I bring these two together to work together on one surface? And I started doing like the math calcul- mathematical mathematical calculations behind it. Start coming up with different ratios and formulas. And you know, I'd, on, on paper, it it made sense. Uh, you know, like theoretically, it made sense. So I think for like three yeah. months, um, I went on. But I say um, sabbatical <laughs> of just mm-hmm. experimenting yeah. how I can bring these two mediums together, and finally, together. finally, wow. te- February of 2021. Uh, yeah, 2021. I had like, was it? Yeah, 2021. Yeah, no, 20. Last year, 2022. Oh my God, February of 2022. I had a a breakthrough in like. Okay, coming together of these um, um, re- um, mediums, and I've just been refining medium, it. Yeah. yeah, I've just been refining it since then, pretty much. Yeah, you know? it's so beautiful to see. By the way, I mean, um, just the ex- and I'm going to tag all of your work on the show now. Just the expressions and um, the stories they convey. Like, I mean, amazing work, and thank, thank you. you so much for just you know um putting us through your journey so you live in the u.s and i think you shot up between the nigeria and the u.s right mm-hmm. how long have you been how long have you made this transition as far between those two countries uh i so i moved i decided to move here 2020 i moved in de, no, december november no december december of 2021 okay. uh okay so I it's been almost to, two years now Almost three mm. years, and I'm still a baby in the city. Three years now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, um, I feel like it was, it was. I think it was just the right time, you know, um, the right time yeah. to make that move, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of stories to tell because <laughs> the migrant experience is one that cannot be written. In. Even if there was to be a book to, to be written about it, it differs for everyone. Uh, that's true. But um, so far, what has it been like for you? And what's your like your current pieces mm-hmm. right now? How are you reflecting those experiences through your current um, pieces, especially through storytelling? Uh, my my first my first my first issue when I got here was. Um, the fact that everyone thought they knew me based off of where I came from. So everyone had like this stereotypical idea of, oh, he's Nigerian. Oh, he's from Africa. And before I even introduce myself, you already think you have an idea of me. And everyone Mm -hmm. had like this preconceived uh, notion about me, right? And it was kind of like, it was kind of hard for me to connect with people, right? And um, also, it's like my second issue was the fact that so my English back home I thought was good. When I got here, it was like everyone was like, "Yo, I can hear you." So your accent is so thick. Your accent is so this. Please, yeah. please, 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 <laughs> please. You know? I hope I hope we didn't let you know? that cut down because this people you know? be just tackling on so many levels. You know, like, oh. I was like, yes, so it was it was hard to it was hard to you know, get my point across without repeating myself several times, right? Oh, they and, have patience. Right. Because they have an accent too. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I was like, um, navigating that, I I kind of like, at some point, started, you know, losing touch with who I was in the sense that I was trying to fit in. So, so I, mm. and that made me ask myself the question that, okay, at least I made the decision to come here. What if I was a young teenager or a young adult or a child that his parents decided to 
move and they were like okay get up we're going that what would be the scenario scenario like you know like how will i feel about that and i started probing to see how this can birth toxic masculinity in in mm-hmm. immigrant children mm-hmm. right and so i started asking questions and in my process of asking questions i met a couple of friends from different places in africa some were senegalese you know where places that they don't speak english and one of the mm-hmm. person one of the person who ended up being a subject i painted what that I met was like oh she moved there when she was like six years old and uh, almost insta- almost immediately she was thrown to school and in school she had to like blending with other kids looking stupid half the time <laughs> you know because it was like um she had to learn to learn she had to learn the the language english to learn in school so no matter how smart she was back uh-huh. home she was in a new she place it, yeah, yeah she was in a yeah. new place where yeah. it looked like you know um um she was stupid you know and and i felt like huh so you constantly trying to prove yourself or prove a point can actually birth a level of mass um, toxicity in you you know yeah, so yeah. that made me work on the series the Charlie series of how um a a young adult with the older brother um um realizes that oh this new society or this new environment is not so nice to him and he adopts like this hard outlook towards this new society and then the younger mm. brother uh sees his older brother and kind of like step into that too you know then over time realize the older brother realizes that oh it's it's okay to actually be me to be soft and calm you know i don't need to put on yeah. this new personality oh, um, yeah. for me to fit yeah, in yeah, you yeah. know and then but the younger brother is still in this process of ah if the world is hard then I'm, i'll be harder you know and the older brother is trying to like yeah. embrace the younger brother through this process and um oh, wow. i'm also like yeah so it's, that's why i'm like i try like last day i was like navigating how um that that process of migration can affect um the emotional um um uh emotional balances of a person or of an individual so um yeah that was uh, what I was working on last year and this year I'm just talking about more about the african experience in the new environment yeah. you know infusing african yeah. symbolism with western culture you know how that blends you know um and navigating that on the emotional side of it pretty much Wow, that's that's so mind blowing. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really loved your robust response. It's like the family dynamics, mm-hmm. you know, with the older brother and the younger brother and you know, seeing like your past person but you're trying to also walk them through whatever you went through. Right. That's that's really, really right. amazing. Yeah. On on your on your one of your pieces, I think it was the Inde Christie one. Ne Christie. I think if I said it ne right. Christie. Yeah, Ne Christie. Uh-huh. Ne Christi. <laughs> I just loved how okay, so for those I don't know yet, uh, I think you had you missed it, there was a, a problem with incense that you know, it was cut somewhere yeah. which kind of like ruined the art. But you decided to even share with us and you decided to just leave mm-hmm. it. And the responses there were so supportive about just leaving it because you know and I think you also talked about how you blamed yourself, how you felt so bad right. about it. <laughs> but you still went ahead and shared mm-hmm. it. Can you just talk about um you know, I, I, it seems like you're in a place of, place of acceptance now, and you've you've, and I think it actually makes it more beautiful because we don't get to see that part of artists, you know, right. especially their artwork. We always see the perfect paintings, right. but to have a scar on one and just living in there because it's so equally beautiful. Right. Can you just walk us through how you came to that point of acceptance with this particular um, artwork? So the interesting thing was, I think when I was done with that painting, I was I was preparing it to be shipped out to a gallery. And hmm. and then I was stretching it, and I think I was maybe either too excited or too I don't know. <laughs> then it ripped, and I was like, ah. after four hours, I was like, ah. 
you know um, wait you said you spent 400 yeah, yeah, hours on yeah, it right yeah 400 400 mm. hours i'm like yeah. oh my god i was so so uh, at, at that point i just started laughing like I, there was nothing else i could do you can't cry, yeah, right? i just started you can't cry. i just i just started laughing i was like okay okay this has happened <laughs> yeah and it was but I, i think that my first reaction was a subtle reaction now at first i started laughing days after i started feeling the weight of it on me i was like oh my god like yo i i gave this painting 102% of me you know like i spent so much time i wake up every day and go back to this painting and you know the detail like for me at that point it was like it was an eye eye in terms of my artistry like in terms of expression mm. of skill mm. you know um the detail yeah. that i expressed in that painting was like oh wow you know to me that's how i felt so it felt like you know I, i almost immediately i started working on a new painting but i couldn't get over the tom painting oh my yeah, god yeah. and it was kind of like affecting me in a sense so what i decided to do was when at the point the now at the point where i was sharing this on my instagram page this incident has happened weeks ago <laughs> it does it has happened possible. weeks ago I, could tell. You know? I, could tell. i just i just needed time to process it like to really reflect mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. what had happened and at some point i was like okay it's okay to actually have incidents like this like it is yeah. it's, you yeah. can't control some of these things you know like you can at the end yeah. of the day all you can do is put in the work and whatever happens happens so at the point where i was sharing it i was actually coming to accept what had happened you know i was yeah yeah, yeah. so i, I decided <laughs> you've gone through the stages of stages yeah. of grief yeah you're not at the <laughs> no, no, i'm at the yeah. acceptance stage <laughs> you know so <laughs> i was like all right and the fact that my first my first instinct was not to fix it was was mm, i felt like to do something else yeah, yeah. i felt like was yeah. a, That's a stage yeah. of growth for me you know Because uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was usually my first, my first instinct to be like, okay, how do we fix this? You know, and I, at this point, I'm like, I start, I called a couple of other veteran artists that I know, and they're like, okay, why not try mm-hmm. this? Why not try that? I'm like, uh, if I try that, it might not necessarily be the same. Some were like, oh, I should get yeah. restoration service. I checked restoration service. Um, it's like almost. It was charged like, an leg, right? Yeah, like almost five thousand dollars to restore. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like uh, no, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, you know what? I will come back. I just put the piece away, and I was like, maybe I'll know through my art journey, and I have a couple other pieces that will get ripped. Maybe at some point I can have an exhibition of all my torn paintings. I'm sure <laughs> someone will still be able to buy yeah. them. That could be your stuff, you know. Yeah, you know. I'm sure it's still it's still something you can still sell to. I'm sure there's there'll be someone someone that will buy that right. even at a premium price. Right. It's like okay, at the end yeah. of the day, who am I yeah. to define? Who am I to define the what uh, artist the right? Fit, right. Yes. The fit yes. Of this work, the value. You know? Yes. Yeah. So yes, who knows? Yes, Anything yes, can yes, happen, yes. you know. So I just decided to let it be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Thank you. And I think even much more it's very encouraging. I mean, we, I feel like if you're alive, you're 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 creative, whatever your medium might be, we're all creative, mm-hmm. right? That process that you shared, I think is very very encouraging. Especially the the part of accepting and just saying, you know what? It happened and it's what mm-hmm. it is, but we can move forward with mm-hmm. this, you know. So yeah, th- thanks for sharing mm-hmm. that. I had I had another question about mental health, okay. right? Okay. You know, you your work really talks a lot about some of the things I feel like as Africans and uh, we don't really talk a lot about like men's health and mental health and you know our masculinity as a way now how do you balance the emotional weight of addressing the sensitive topics like mental er- mental health in your art mm-hmm. with the need of just self care and well being as an artist uh i feel like i feel like that's a topic that is not so talked about in the african society yeah um yeah and 
uh, I, I saw so many things grow up and growing up. I wasn't okay with them. Like I was just mm-hmm. at some point, I feel like I was also exhibiting some of these things that I saw, you know, um, of mm-hmm. how, you know, the idea of how a man should behave, how a man uh, should look and appear, um, what a woman is like or the role a woman should play. And I noticed that at some point I was exhibiting some of these traits. Then I had to call myself back, like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know. And, and I feel like that's, that's um, what most people's journey is like in life. You know, you you see something, you adopt something, and after until you learn that no, this is not, this doesn't make any sense. This is not, you know? this wasn't you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. they're like, okay, is it why am I exhibiting this? Is it because everyone else is exhibiting this, or is this because this is what works for mm. me? So I realized that oh, this is what everyone was exhibiting. Not that doesn't necessarily mean it was right. So I decided mm-hmm. to call myself back into like okay, um, um connect with yourself and not your ego which i I feel like Mm. which i feel like most men are connected with their ego to to their ego that's hard man and not themselves you know yeah yeah Yeah. so i I feel like i feel like um and also you if you see if you see a a a man exhibit his feminine side in the african society you are easily called Oh, you are, you are, you are, yeah. you are being too weak. Oh, you are looking, appearing so soft. Oh, you are this. Oh, you are that. They easily label, you know, um, so many bad yeah. words yeah. to a person yeah. that is, you know, um, 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 connecting to their feminine side. And so when I first, when I first, when I moved there um, in 2021, I noticed how, I yeah, I noticed how, how words like "I love you" was freely and openly said. <laughs> it was weird to me at first. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> you guys just throw love everywhere like this, you know? Like it was, it was, you know. I, I sometimes at, at first I didn't know how to respond to it, you know, because back home nobody just would say, oh, because of this is how I feel at the moment. I just say I love you, you know, and I was like, you know, words like that was like, huh, interesting. Now imagine a kid growing up. Now, I, for for the most part, I, I didn't hear my parents tell me I love you. <laughs> oh, I, most parents, yeah. most parents you grew up with, but they showed it in yeah. different ways. They showed yeah. it in different ways. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> they were busy trying to survive, y'all. They were busy, busy trying to survive. <laughs> you know, like I didn't. You know, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't hear my parents say, "Oh, I'm sorry." You get what I'm saying, like, mm. and that yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. shaped yeah. that kind of like shaped my my idea towards life differently, right? Although at some point mm. I, I realized that why why is it bad for like why does my dad feel like it's bad for my for him to say sorry or to say I love you? But one point shaped changed my 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 view towards it. So I had my dad was always very strict, very hard, very this, that, that, that. And one day I saw him, I saw him cry. I'm like, no way. What? What happened? <laughs> no way. No way. Oh. <laughs> no way. This is not possible. How can I walk into the room and I'm seeing this man, the man of cry? Right. What's going like, on? This is not possible. Oh. Like, you guys have been lying to me oh. all my life. <laughs> this is not possible. Oh. So I'm like, oh. and immediately he saw me, he cleaned up his face and he wants to appear all hard again. I'm like, bro, you don't need that. <laughs> you don't need that. You know, like, I already, I already, I already, I already so uh, I've already seen what I needed to uh, see, you know, yeah. and and I could just easily start painting uh, a picture of every other male figure I had in my in my life, and every other you know male uh, you know like I've you know every other male yeah. uh, I've interacted with, and how they have these moments, but they try their best to hide it. And I'm like, mm. that's that's not a healthy way to live. If if 
I feel down today. If I want to express now, I feel down. I should be able to express it. You know, I I shouldn't bottle it in. I shouldn't hide it from everyone else. You get what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, that made yeah. me start talking about um, um, connecting more to your feminine side, as you know, as yeah, as as, yeah, as, as a, a man. man. It's it's beautiful. It's not you being weak. It's not you being yeah. less a man. It is who you are you know even in biology they say we are made up of x and y chromosomes and the dominance of one mm-hmm. is what chooses the sex and gender but the gender. it yeah, doesn't yeah. say they never said that the other chromosome is dead no it is still recessive in you you know so it's still a part of your genetic makeup you know your masculine and feminine it has always has to be in balance for you to yeah. appreciate and develop fully as a being you know so um when uh when um when you start making men feel bad or feel sad, um um less uh, terrible because of ex- expressing the feminine side then that's that's not an LD that's not an LD environment for men to be in and you know also we what i was talking about in like that charlie piece was embracing embracing each other through this process you know creating a safe space Mm -hmm. for more men to be able to express themselves and express themselves freely and creating a safe space between men to accommodate this expression you know, we shouldn't. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't just be oh, men uh, having to express themselves to to uh, uh, um, women, but it should be men expressing themselves to them their fellow self and having a safe space where they can do this. You know, and um, everyone everyone encouraging themselves through the through the journey or this complicated journey called life, pretty much. You know. I mean, that was that was very strong. Thanks for sharing that. And I think there are so many things to tease out from what you just talked about. One is that we can only do better than what our parents provided. Mm-hmm. Like with, um, I see kind of like you know, parenting and you know the interaction between parents and children like a relay race. Mm-hmm. You know, they run their race, they pass on the baton, and then the baton, we do better, right? right? right. And um, yeah, yeah. And I think you know this is something you you're, you're doing better. Um, because imagine just how stuffy my feel not being able to express yourself mm-hmm. openly now there's something cs that we said about which i think i wanted to you know draw from what you talked about about you know the gender roles mm-hmm. and he he said it is arrogance to call in us to call frankness fairness and chivalry masculine when we see them in a woman mm-hmm. and it's arrogance in them to describe a man's sensitivity sensitiveness or tact or tenderness as feminine mm-hmm. i think that we have two sides in us mm-hmm. right and even as a female you know i might have some male tendencies mm-hmm. it doesn't make me less female, right. right and i think being able to embrace those because as a man you, you do need those tender mm-hmm. moments you mm-hmm. know in in relating to other mm-hmm. men even other females or even your daughters mm-hmm. you need those tenderness but i think um as a whole as a society we should be more embracing of you know, just people being able to express themselves. Because all these things are put in, in boxes and, you know, a man should be this, a female should be that. It's not helping us. It's not helping right, us as right, a whole, you know. So right. ha- letting people just, you know, feel free to express themselves. And and if they want to be more feminine, if they look, you know, passed off as male, that's okay. Let them mm-hmm. be who they want to be. Mm-hmm. And give them that space to express their individuality mm-hmm. is what I'm, I'm hearing you say. And thank you for sharing mm-hmm. that. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, <laughs> this has really been, um, and we're kind of rounding off now because I feel like I could keep talking to you on and on and on. <laughs> I mean, it's really been very nice chatting with you, and you're a very good conversationalist. <laughs> now, um, are there any upcoming projects you have? Oh no, before we ask, ask that question, I mean, immig- immigrating to a country like the US, as you can see, is so different from how we mm-hmm. grew. In a sense that the social co- cohesiveness sometimes can be quite lacking, mm-hmm. um, but it has a lot of great things, you know, which my favorite place in the world would be the social 
cohesiveness of Nigeria mm -hmm. and just the bubbly life and just all those things you have and then the organization and you know the stability economic stability of the mm -hmm. US I'm yet to find a world like that you know that would be my favorite you know place to live right. in the world and I haven't found a country mm -hmm. like that but um, how are you taking care of yourself you know being away from home and I imagine you're having to build a new community mm -hmm. And um, you know, um, find your support group in a place. Are you living in New York? Yeah, I live in New York. It seems. Yeah. I mean, it has all its great things, but there are some things about New York that I live in Oklahoma. I live in the <laughs> you know, so we live in the same yeah, get, state, in the get. same country, but we could be living in different different <laughs> countries, right? But how, right, how are you right. coping? You know, post immigration and all that. How are you doing it? Uh, what has I worked mean, well? What has not worked well? Uh. Yeah. I feel like I feel like it's it's been it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been a journey with its own highs and lows. It's been it's been interesting because it's like um, I mean I, I I like the I like the fact that New York is has the energy of Lagos. You know, it's just mm -hmm. uh, I say Lagos and maybe it's pro, and then New York is like the pro max. <laughs> you know, <I> think. <laughs> Lagos, Lagos is still learning one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's like I, I like I, I needed. That's why of all places I would like. Okay, I would like to stay in New York. You know, I need. I need that yeah, fast pace. Yeah, yeah, I need that fast pace yeah. energy. And also, it's like um, there's there's a whole lot of like inspiration out here. It's like if you go to the subway, the the way people act. If you expose if you expose one person to the three, I call it the three different worlds of New York. That's the world of the streets, the world in the park, and the world in the subway. You will see this same person mm. acting three different ways. You know, and <laughs> and it, that's interesting. You know, like New York is a place to people watch. You know, you enjoy you enjoy seeing different people acting. You know, different ways in these different you know settings. Um, and also, it's like everyone has a story. You know, everyone you find, everyone you find in New York has his own story. Uh, as what they are aiming for. So that kind of like gives me unlimited source of inspiration for works i'm yet to do or projects i'm yet to you know um work on and um and uh uh also at the same time it's like it's it's it can be also like really choking in the sense that you oh, yeah. you just need a moment of quiet uh, it's like drowning in, 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 in it's like being thirsty in the middle of an right, ocean like you know right. yeah you know, like sometimes <laughs> yeah, all you yeah, need is yeah. just that moment of quiet and you don't get it in new york you know it's like i'm getting not even at five a.m. Yeah. in the morning i have been there I have, I the city of seven it never sleeps <laughs> right it never sleeps yeah yeah it's I've, like, had, I've had like three sirens go back during, during this recording i don't know if you could hear it in the background <laughs> yeah it's like, yeah, it's, it's like you know finest yeah yeah so i mean <laughs> like every other place every place has its pros and cons you know so it's but it's just been it's been an interesting journey i'll just put it that way you know it's been i've met i've met really great p persons i've i've connected with really interesting people i've heard different people tell their stories um yeah. i and i've all, i've also shared my story with different people you know so at the end of the day it's it's that's what the beauty that's the beauty of life you know and every place has its yeah. own pros and cons you know but for now i think this is where i i, I want to be you know for now you know later at some point i might be like okay i i need some more quiet i i I promise to be at least three hours away from from New York because <laughs> I need I still <laughs> need that time. Which is in New York, but not the city. <laughs> yeah, you know, I need to be maximum three hours yeah. away so that I can be like still touch base and be like, okay, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. and get yeah, yeah. get that energy pretty much, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's there's this quote by I think it was Mary Schmidt that said, "Live in New York City once, but leave before it makes you hard. Right. Live in Northern Carolina, California once, but leave before it makes soft. you soft. Huh, soft. Interesting. At least you know you have your options. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's the beauty of the U.S. It's, it should be called United Countries of America. <laughs> the states could not be, right. they could not be so different from one another, right. right? But it's good that you're finding your niche and um, 
And I think that your sensitivity and sensibility in knowing just what you need and how to abase and abound is going to serve you very mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Because where you are right now is, it's, I mean, it's perfect for your craft and just the exposure and the access, like you said, your audience, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all that that you get to see there. But so I'm, I'm wishing you all of the very, very, very best. Thank you. Thank you. Now, and I need to introduce you to Mrs. Sarike, by the way. Okay. She's a podcast. She's lives in New York. She lives in Harlem. You need to know her. She's oh, okay. like a Nigerian woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's, she's deep for art. Oh, my goodness. She's a, she's a patron of the art. Oh, you need to be. I'm going to do it. If it's okay with you, I can do an email introduction. Yeah, sure. She, she, you would love yeah, her. Sure, she would yeah, love, sure. You would love her. She's, sure. She's, she's, she's pro-African. She drives. Oh, wow. She knows a lot of other Africans as well. Yeah, she's pan-African. Anyways, um, uh-huh. let's let's talk about just you know the final things as you as you as you leave will be, you know. So mm-hmm. you've done quite a lot, you know, uh, and you've you've, mm-hmm. you've walked us through just you know your, how you came into your art and your craft. What are just what's the future like for you? What, what do you envision you know doing in the next few years? And um, if there are other up- upcoming projects or collaborations in these creative spaces that you're excited about or you'd like to share with the listeners, this is your time to also talk about those things as well. Uh, upcoming projects uh, or what I'll be doing the next few years. I'll still be I'll still be creating art in different forms. So I recently started picking up a um, film. Um, uh, um, so I've been working like I've worked on like, a couple of short films with, um, uh, and they have been premiered in LA in you know so many festivals like that so i I feel like that's that's a medium i'm still putting very close Um, you mean like you featuring on them or your art pieces featuring no it's like producing these films like i've co-produced and produced um uh this uh some films um and uh that is something i i think i want to like delve in more um film production um uh i and also documentary um there are a lot to talk about that is to create like an extensive conversation beyond just the canvas um yeah. um i want to also give people more access into how my mind works um through film um and i've been i've collaborated with poets in the past i also want to like um work with everybody and anybody as long as you have a nice creative idea i'm happy to work with anybody <laughs> um yeah, um, yeah. i'm tipping my own uh, we might not necessarily work but we can also like have discussions i'm always happy to Robert, have yeah you yeah, know um, yeah. um conversations based off of um creative processes um i am working on a two-person show in november um it's an exhibition with a very good friend of mine that I really respect. We recently became friends, but for a long time I've always looked at his works and like, you know, respected his work. And recently I discovered that he was also a big fan of my work. I'm like, okay, this is how I look up to him. What? <laughs> this, <laughs> you know, what? Like, was, I can't go yeah, like, <laughs> It was like when we were having a conversation, it was like he almost Aww. opted out on scene. It was like, wait, I know this guy. Like, yeah, I'll definitely want to exhibit with this guy. Yeah, like I'm a big fan of his. Aww. And which is I was it was really heartwarming to to know that okay, there are some persons that you look up to and this person's actually still appreciate what you do. You know, even though there's so much years in them um, experience and age yeah, um, yeah. difference but yeah. yeah having having such um such is really like a blessing um and um yeah. uh it's just more storytelling in different form you know um uh, yeah. and hopefully in the coming future i have like a solo show of mine uh where you can like um delve into uh the african experience um undiluted <laughs> it's um wow. so it's um yeah i want to work on i want to work on um um series of projects and documentaries that to be exhibited um um i'm still it's all, all in the work so i don't I don't like talking about, so I don't jinx it. <laughs> but it's all in the world. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please, I understand. But, I understand. But, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's something um, that I'm excited about, and I hope um, when it's out, um, people can, my audience can really connect and interact with, with it and appreciate, yeah. you know, as much as 
I'm letting out pretty much, you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like thank you for, you know, um all you do. I think I forgot to mention this. You're bringing Nigeria and Africa to, you know, to the forefront and through your art and you're having those conversations that needed to be had. Mm-hmm. And in, in, even the galleries, I mean, the African American Museum, yeah. you know, that was commissioned <laughs> how many years ago? They feature your pieces already. Yeah. I hope you're taking, you know, some time and space to really dwell, not like, you know, soak into it and just be lost in that, right. but acknowledging just how far you've come, you know, um, from that student who was struggling in soil sciences to where you are right mm-hmm. now. And this is just scratching, no point intended, <laughs> scratching the surface for what you're going to be able to do. And I, I hope you, you're very proud of everything you've accomplished so far. Thank and thank you. you for all you do, for bringing, thank you know, you. talking about our experiences, you're adding to those conversations about the diversity in our culture as Nigerians mm-hmm. and just some of the, you know, the talents we bring to the world. Because when you hear, when people hear about Nigerians, it's always usually the bad stuff, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, and no pressure on you, you know, just keep being you, but just keep doing what you're doing. Thank and you. we're all here for it. Thank you. All that to say thank you. And I really, really do appreciate your, your humility and um, just the, um, the straightforwardness you had just in responding to my questions thank you. and talking about heavy things like mental health and gender norms mm-hmm. and all that and i cannot wait to bring you back uh and and i'm i'm gonna you know find you i found you on instagram and looking forward to more of your work no pressure there as well <laughs> all that thank you so thank much you, it was really you. very nice chat thank you so today. much i really i yeah. really um yeah. i really appreciate this platform um I appreciate what you do. Um, when I got the email, I was like, "Oh wow, oh, wow!" You know, I'm like, "Okay, okay." Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes, yeah, yes. So, but thanks to my assistant Hawa, she was the one that found you. Uh, you know, uh, Hawa is the one she found you. She was like, "You need to bring her, bring him on." I'm like, "Yeah, let's do it." So thank you so much, Hawa, for making. Yeah. She's gonna listen to this recording because she's my assistant. So yeah, thanks to Hawa. But now I, I found you, and you know, I'll, I'll follow yeah, you on sure. Instagram and sure, sure. You know, just really, look out for your work. Really, really yeah. appreciate this. Um, really appreciate the conversation and uh, hopefully we can work Thank again you. in the future again you know <laughs> please do and if you ever need a platform to, to to talk about anything consider us again and i will do an introduction with mrs um sorry okay. you need you need to just have coffee with yeah, her. you know yeah. oh my goodness yeah. <laughs> I love it good. i'm so happy I'm so excited for you. You know, I'm so, so excited for you. Right. She's right there in oh, New yeah. York. Oh, you guys yeah. need to be. I think she's in Harlem. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, I'm so, also anyway. in Harlem. So yeah, yeah. We, that'll be really. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you, you have. You just have to. Have, really but nice, I need to know. see a picture of you guys hanging yeah. out. Okay, I'm gonna. Do, I'm gonna. Once the call is over, I'm gonna send her a voice note and you know tell her all okay, about yeah, sure, oh, you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. All right, I look forward. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of the week. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. All right, bye. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye. You as well. Thank you. Bye. Wow, guys, that was very good. Oh my goodness, that was. I'm actually beaming from you know beaming from year to year and grinning from year to year. Like this is good. This is why we do this show just to connect people. I felt so many tugs in my heartstring just talking to him and. You know, we had to get a lot of men coming on the podcast, which you know is something that I've been really trying to work on. But this this was really good. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to talk to this young man and all of the things he's doing. This gentleman, sorry, why did I call him young man? Talk, talking to this gentleman and all of the work he's doing and his artistry and just the conversations is evoking. If you love this episode, let us know. Um, if you want to come on the podcast as a guy, as a female, as a man, whatever, we we'll like to just you know keep those stories populating. In any event, this has been the Most Simple Podcast. Thank you for listening. I remain your host, Mo. Catch you guys on another episode. Love ya. And stay safe.